Good morning, my dear students. This is Entrepreneurship 2. I'm Miss Tania Poveda. Welcome. Okay, remember it's very important that you keep this information with you. Okay, this is a summary. This is summary number two. And we're going to review some important points about focus group. But if you need to take notes, go for your notebook or your folder and copy as much information as you need. Anyway, you can save this on your computer or check the site anytime you want. Are you ready? Okay, as I told you in the beginning, today we're going to do a last review about focus group. It's very important. We understand very well all the tools and techniques we use to investigate the market. In the end of this video, well, almost in the end, we're going to watch a video very important about what to do and what not to do during a focus group, which is basically an example of what we've been studying. So, you know, a focus group, it's a group of people sitting together talking about a topic. And it's very important that there is a person leading the conversation. So in this case, could be the researcher or the investigator. It can be you. Okay. Um, remember, you have to prepare as much as possible the questions, the information, etc., examples, the devices to record the information, etc. You need to plan ahead. It means you need to be ready for any situation that you can face during the focus group. Remember, it's really hard to get six to eight people with similar characteristics in the same room at the same time. So that's not an opportunity you can have very often. So take it and be very careful being ready. Well, just like an efficient key information, informant interview requires planning, a focus group requires a lot of planning to do it right. Yes, a lot of planning. So it's not only sitting there and talking, it's not only letting people to say what they want, it's a guided conversation. So you lead the conversation with questions and comments right in time, to get the most accurate and deeper information for your investigation. These are some tips that you, I recommend you to follow. So memorize your questions in that way. You're not going to be like, ah, uh, ah, uh, or what, 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 you know, because if you memorize your questions, you know what to ask. It's going to go naturally. Be gentle during the discussion. So don't get mad, even if you don't like the answers, relax, listen, and continue being gentle. Make sure that everybody's comfortable. Just like in any other conversation with your friends or with your family, you know, it's very important that people feel comfortable so they can be themselves and they are going to give you better information, very important information for your investigation. Never be shy. If you have like a shy personality, probably you you can do something else like take notes or record the record the investigation. Because there's some, one person leading and that person shouldn't be shy. It's really dangerous if in a focus group you are leading and you are very shy. Like you can see her face, it's like only her eyes. She looks a little bit nervous. Okay, so now, how to record data? Do you remember this? We talked about maybe two weeks ago or one week ago, I'm not sure. Anyway, so to record data, there are different options, maybe with a camera or maybe with a hand recorder or your cell phone, etc. So think about the best way to save the information, to record the information. When we're talking about record, we're talking about something you can check later and make sure you get the answers you need to. And also it's very important to know 
Who said that information? Who told you that? Okay, so you can be the woman in green and be the leader and get the get the information from people and you can have other two people one or two people helping you or if you don't feel like confident enough to be leading these kind of conversations to be in front of a group of people and making questions and listening and cheering people to speak you can be one of the helpers and take notes or record the information so don't worry there's work for everybody so the best way to record information is with a camera with a camera you can listen and see who is speaking and who's saying what so that's the best way to do it also it can help you with your transcript like we can see here in this picture just like we did before it's like when you have a camera you can pay more attention on the time and also write down or transcript who said this who said that and then you can check your notes remember this is only for market investigation i mean this class but you can use focus group for other kind of things what is not recommended it's only um, recording the voice because sometimes people speak at the same time so that can be very confusing for you and for the people helping you okay so as you can see her face here in this picture she's kind of like confused because everybody apparently is uh, speaking at the same time those color lines represent people speaking okay so find a balance that makes your subjects comfortable and ask for their permission first yeah so every time you're going to record someone even if it's a video or only voice you must make sure that they know it so don't do it without their permission why because people need to feel comfortable people need to trust you so if you show them that you trust them that you yeah, um, that you care about their opinion they are going to be comfortable and speak freely and remember you want comfortable people telling you the truth so your investigation is going to be deeper what happens if one or two people in the group they don't want to be recorded they said no i don't like it or uh, i don't want to and they are going to feel uncomfortable well in that case you cannot definitely you cannot record not with your cell phone not a voice uh, record well maybe only voice record but talking about video so what you will need to do then is to take a lot of notes oh, and get audio too so then you're definitely going to need some help of people taking notes as we can see in this picture right so we have the leader or the investigator and two helpers on the left what are they doing only taking notes they are not going to be speaking they are not going to interrupt you they're not going to talk personally with each or all the people in the focus group they're just going to be there taking notes again it's very important you make people know that there is someone taking notes so they're going to feel more comfortable and trust you so this is an example of a hand recorder or only audio and this is going to help you with your notes because after the focus group you can gather your team listen to the answers or transcript the answers and analyze the information so what to do versus what not to do on a focus group this is what i told you in the beginning so we receive so much information about oh you should do this you should do that or you shouldn't or you mustn't do this or that right so this is like um, 
me telling you what to do or what not to. So today, even this is a review or this is a summary of what we've been studying, I want you to watch this video. It's an example, a really good example about what to do or what not to do during a focus group investigation during this technique. Are you ready? Okay, let's watch. Let's watch this really good video. what they know about your learning. So just share with me some ideas of like what you want faculty members to know. Sorry. Hey, how's it going? I know, I'm, I'm doing a session right now. Yeah, I know. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, please also make sure your phones are off. Really disrespectful, so we want to make sure everything is off so that we can actually get the session going. Okay, so what does faculty know about student learning and have you used Connect before? Uh, I haven't used Connect yet, but I've used Vista. Okay, well, this session is more about Connect and not about Vista, so let's try to stay on topic because, like, we don't want the session to be forever, so let's get anything to say about Connect. Like, well, I don't know if this is on topic, but I don't think I necessarily learn on Connect. I mean, I use the discussion boards, so. though. Discussion boards? I mean, they don't help you learn? Do you even post? Yeah. Alright, let's just move on to question two, which is... Um, I don't know. Okay, let's just, do you guys even know like how you learn? Like what's your GPA? Do you like pay attention class? Do you have Facebook? Like what do you guys do? Um, why are you asking us? Are you judging us? No, I'm not judging you. I mean, not to be so offensive. I just want to know like what gets in the way of your learning. Like do you, are you one of those kids that has your laptop open on Facebook during lectures? Well, there's only three of us, so let's wrap this up. I'm just gonna write down that you guys go on Facebook and we can just like conclude this session. So thanks for coming. Okay, I'm going to pause the video here a little bit. So if you pay attention in the beginning, it was the video about what not to do during a focus group. And you probably recognize some of the characteristics I recommend you before in the previous videos or in, on this video. So what did not work on this focus group? No context for focus group or, question, or for questions. So they were like out of place. She made participants really uncomfortable. Body language, remember, the way you sit, the way you speak, the way you look, the way you um, connect with people. No active listening. So she was on her phone, she was like, oh, okay, like whatever. Inappropriate fa facilitation skills. No record keeping and evaluation methods. So it's like most of the things were wrong. Maybe all of them were wrong. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, these questions are for you after something like that happened. If you had this kind of troubles with your focus group, ask yourself, how are you going to follow up if you didn't take notes? So take notes next time, solve it. What can you do to make participant, participants feel comfortable? I told you this before in, um, in one of the videos. One of the things you can do is like cheer people up. Like, you know, they are there, they want to help on the investigation. Some people are really shy or probably don't trust very much. But if you cheer people like, oh, that was good, that was great, thank you, that, that's an information I can use for this and this, or this can lead us to this kind of topic or things like that, people will feel like they are important and that their contribution is really important too. So they're going to keep going on helping you. Giving a context, what is the difference between a presenter and a facili facilitator? So that's kind of easy, you know, presenter is just a person like introduce what you're going to do and the facilitator is going to help you to make things easier. Keeping on track, so you're talking about something, keep talking about that. If for any reason you talk about something different, go back to the track and keep going on your objective. What can you do when conversation get off topic? Just what I told you, right? So if things are not, people are uh, talking about something else, remember you are the leader. So maybe you can listen for a while, not too long because some people can get annoyed. Even you um, are going to waste some time. So yeah, okay, try to lead people, to take people back to the conversation. So these are some questions to consider to improve. Okay, so you probably obviously realized the differences between these two presentations. So in this case, you could tell that she was more organized. Did she remember the questions? Do you think she memorized them or not? I think she did because she was like really confident about what she was asking. She knew exactly what to ask next. This, uh, next. <laughs> So it was a very well organized session. She was on track all the time. She asked open-ended questions and proving questions. She was respectful, created a safe and comfortable environment, and she generated students' perspectives. So they gave their own point of view. So your role, questions for you. 
what's your role and purpose as a facilitator about creating a question? Which type of questions generate the most feedback? What about the tone? What can a facilitator do to make the group comfortable? Okay, so questions to consider. And finally, given a context, why is it important to give a context for your questions? In other words, the questions must be connected to what you're talking about to your investigation. It's not any random questions, no. It's questions with a context. So that's it. Okay, so that's it. Let's continue with the presentation. We're about to finish, don't worry. So that was about what to do versus what not to do during a focus group. Do you remember how many groups should you run when investigating a market? Remember that when talking about a product, about a market, usually we're talking about thousands or hundreds or millions of people. Thousands, hundreds or millions of possible consumers of your product. So a focus group, since it's a group of six to eight people, probably they are not going to be too representative for the whole population. So only one focus group is not going to be enough. Their recommendation is to have some focus group. Do you remember exactly how many? It's a recommendation. It's not telling you you must. It's telling you you should do this. Because a single focus group is almost never sufficient, especially if focus groups are your only data source. You can combine investigation um, techniques. You can use like observation and interview or survey and, and focus group or survey and observation. You can combine them, two or three techniques according how deep you want to go. So if focus groups are the main and only way for you to gather information, the recommendation is that you run at least four focus groups. So your data reflects the diversity of your key populations. So this is a question that you probably saw in the video. How do you know it's going well or going poorly? So it's going good or it's going bad? That's easy. This is one of the, the um, most common situations that you can face. Like you have people that love a product and people that hate it. So in that case, once you know that they are not going to be, they are not going to have the same characteristics or something might happen because they are too different, the recommendation is that you break it into two focus groups. So you will, you will have groups of people with more common characteristics. That's an extra recommendation. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed, especially the video about uh, what to do and what not to do. It's a very nice video and very good example too. So have a wonderful day, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye.